one. So we are, we're, we're moving into a new segment, okay? And it's all about graphing. There's a lot of stuff to learn about graphing. Um, some of it's going to feel like a re repetition to some of you, because some of you know this. I'm a, I, I would think that most, I mean, all of you have learned how to at least plot points on a Cartesian plane, but I don't know for sure. So today we're just going to do that. Tomorrow we move into, you know, actually um, uh, graphing lines and so forth. And, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to show you different types of equations that you can graph, all right? Some are very simple to graph, some are a little more complex to graph. And there are tricks and shortcuts. I'm going to be giving you tons of these shortcuts, or at least a few shortcuts, which will take moving, take, it'll, it'll allow you to graph things in under 10 seconds. I mean, it's very, very quick when you use those shortcuts, as long as you identify when those shortcuts happen. But in the beginning, we, we just have to identify, we have to, we have to set our rules, right? So we've got to cover what is a Cartesian plane. Um, I'm a little rusty on, I think, I, I think that's the name of the guy that invented the, um, you know, the, the started, uh, initially invented this method of graphing. I can't think of his first name. Bill? Bill? <laughs> Bill, maybe it was Bill. Yeah, I think so, no, I don't think so. Um, so, so with a Cartesian plane, it's also called a coordinate plane, okay? And let's first draw a line. We have a vertical line, and then we have a horizontal line. This is the y-axis. So make sure you write all this down in your notes. This is the x-axis. The x-axis is always horizontal. If, if you if you think of a map that has treasure, you know, there's always an x, right? There's always an x where the treasure's buried. Well, that's the ground. That's the x, right? Y rhymes with fly. Fly goes up high, right? So y's go up and down, right? I go up. I'm, I'm trying, right? I'm, I'm digging deep, looking for something, to, right? Okay, all right. Now, now, there are four what we call quadrants, right? Four quadrants. This is the first quadrant, and you, 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 um, you usually do that with a, when you, when you label a quadrant, you label it with a Roman numeral. So, so, Roman, so Roman number one means the first quadrant. That means the first quadrant. And that's how you spell that. And you'd kind of think it would go clockwise, right? But it doesn't. It goes counterclockwise. This is the second quadrant, right? So second quadrant. All right? This is the third quadrant, so third quadrant. Okay. And then this is the fourth. Right? This is the fourth quadrant or fourth quadrant. Okay? This right here where the two axes intersect. What are that what are they called? Do you know? What's that called? Zero. The weight. The weight. The weight. The weight. The intercept. Well, sort of. Who said that? I said the intercept. Okay, well it's, it is the it is it is the place where the x ax, x axis intercepts with the y axis. That's true. It's not called that though. It's called the origin, yes. It's called the origin. This is called the origin. The origin. Good. Now, with, with, with these, basically these are two number lines. It's a horizontal number line and a vertical number line, right? And so 
this number line, this is zero on my x-axis. So here's one, two, three, four, five, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? This is negative one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. With the vertical axis, it's this is zero again, and up is positive and down is negative. So up is one, positive one, positive two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down, this is so that's one, two, three, four, five. That's five, positive five. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. That's negative five. Negative six, <coughs> negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. Negative ten. You with me? Is this new for anybody, just so we know? No. Everybody's experienced this, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. Great. So um, so tonight's going to be easy, and then it moves, we get, we're going to move quickly into stuff that you don't know. All right? So, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually plot points. Points are like a point anywhere on a graph, right? The only thing is, they can be called different things. Points. You can call them just plain old points. Right? And these are, these are x comma y. I'm going to just do that in parentheses. You could call them points. You could coordinate points. Or you could call them ordered pairs. Not P E A R S, but P A I R S, right? Um, but X comma Y, X comma Y. So a, a point is always with a parenthesis, an X. The first number in there will be an X, meaning X goes left and right, right? It tells you which way you go left and right. If it's positive, you go to the right. If you go, if it's negative, you go to the left. The Y tells you, do you fly or do you sink, right? You know. And so if it's positive, you go up, and if it's negative, you go down, right? And um, so all points will have the parentheses on either side of them. The first number is your x, um, and your second is your y. And when you have a coordinate, it is a, it is a map. It is a map. The x tells you where to go left and right, and the y tells you where to go up and down. And you have to follow that entire map before you put your point. Okay? So if I asked you to graph two comma five. Two comma five. I always start at the origin. Okay? I always start at the origin. So at the origin it says two. My first thing is the first thing is two. That says how far I go to the right or left. Since it's positive, I'm going to go to the right. So I go one, two. Now I do not put a dot yet, right? Now it says I have to go up five because five is positive. That's going up. One, two, three, four, five. That's right about here. Now I put the dot. I only put the dot once I've incorporated both of those numbers, right? You guys all know this, right? Yeah. It was like totally easy. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so what are the signs? What what, it, what is x going to be positive and or negative in this quadrant one? Positive. positive. Comma. Is y going to be positive, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Okay. In quadrant two, is x going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Correct. And then is x is y going to be positive. y is going to be positive? Okay. In quadrant three. Negative. X is going to be negative, negative. and negative. Y is going to be negative. Good. And quadrant four, positive. it's going to be, positive. X is going to be positive, negative. and Y? Negative. negative. Beautiful. All right. So, um, all right. So it's pretty, okay, let's, well, so let's just plot a few more. So negative 3 comma negative 7. What would I do? Raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. Okay, Rowan. 
You would go over on negative three. Third. Then three over. Okay. No, no, on that side. Oh, sorry. No, 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 on the left side. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. 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 And then you would go up seven. Or no, down seven. Down seven, five, six, seven, so around there. Yeah. Yes, that's good. All right. Yeah. What if I gave you this? Negative one, comma, zero. All right. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Yell it. Put the dot here? Right here? You're right. Why there? Because it says I don't go anywhere up and down. I just stay stay where I am, right? Okay, good. What if I said this? Um, uh, zero comma six. Zero comma six. You would just go up six. Go up six. Because I don't go left or right at all. It says zero. So I'm going to stay here and I go up six and I put a dot. Beautiful. Okay. And um, hang on one second. Let me just look at this. Um, all right. Now, what if I said this? Tell me. Tell me which quadrant. Which quadrant or axis each point is on? Okay. So, for example, let's see, negative uh, three comma eight. Which quadrant is that in? The two. 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 two, correct. Right, negative, positive. All right, which quadrant or axis is this in? How is it the first one? Why wouldn't it be the fourth one? Because it's positive, positive, not positive. Two zero. It's actually right on where? It's on the axis. Notice the notice I said which quadrant or axis. Right? If it's actually on an axis, it's not in a quadrant. It's actually on an axis. Does it make sense? Your quadrant has to be up, right? Because that would technically be could have been you you know, it's like it's bordering both. It's on the boundary line between quadrant one and quadrant four. Yes? Make sense? Okay. Um, I think that's all you guys need to know. Um, now, so I just want to get a feel for where you guys are. I mean, how many people have graphed a straight line with a T chart? How many people know what a T chart is? Okay. So I'm going to include in this lecture just a little bit about a T chart, okay? Just so that you understand what it is. And since since everybody seems to understand this, fist to five, everybody understands this? Like I want to see. It's really pretty straightforward. Fist to five. Okay. Awesome. Great. Beautiful. Great. So I'm gonna leave that graph on there for a second. Um, okay, I'll just use this area over here. If I gave you an equation like this, y is equal to uh, x plus four. And I asked you to graph that. Up until this point, just understand, up until this point, I have not given you two different variables. Do you agree, you agree with me? Everything you've done has had just one variable. One variable means you solve for it, and you get one answer. Do you agree with me? Mm -hmm. For example, you know, x plus 4 equals 10. What would I do? Subtract, whoops, <laughs> subtract 4, <laughs> subtract 4, I get x is equal to 6. That's it. That's my answer. There's no other possibility. That's it, right? As soon as I put two variables and there's one equation, there are an infinite number of solutions. An infinite number. Because if x were 0, what would y be? If x were 0, y would be 4. If x were 1, y would be? Five. If x were 2, 6. six. If x were 10, 14. 14, right? You see what I mean? So no longer is it one point on a number line. It's no longer just like here's 0 
and here's six, and there's my answer. It's all possibilities of a line. So we're actually going to graph a line that goes on forever and ever in both directions. And that will illustrate all the possibilities of this particular equation. Okay? So the way we do that is we do that with a t-chart. Okay? And a t-chart, a t-chart looks like this. You have a big T, and you have an X and a Y. It's alphabetical, just like a coordinate point is. You have an x comma y, right? So you have this t-chart. Sometimes in books, they won't do them like this. In, in textbooks, they'll do them like this, where this is x and this is y. Because this takes up too much space, right? So the textbook likes this method, because then they can just go that way. Oops. And, um, all right, what? Say it again. What? Okay. Okay. So these, I, I always use these. They're easier, right? And so what you do is you choose, you choose your value for x. You choose your so Harrison, 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 Harrison. Okay. You choose your you choose your value for x. And. With a straight line, this is going to be a straight line. The way you know it's a straight line is it's y equal equals x, not x squared, not x to the third, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth. It's just y equals x. Y is equal x plus four. It's going to be a straight line, right? Where you don't have any exponents on the x or the y. So I always choose zero. Almost always I choose zero, one, and two. Almost always. All right. You get to choose your x's. I could choose. I could choose negative four hundred and twenty-three point seventeen, or I could choose positive four billion five hundred million three hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred twenty-two. But that's going to make it hard to graph, right? It's easier to keep it simple. So you choose simple numbers. So I choose 0, 1, and 2, almost always. The only exception is if there's a fraction in front of my x. I might do something different, but that's another lecture. Um, so 0, 1, and 2. So immediately you do your t-chart. You realize it's a straight line because it's y equals x, basically, plus something. So you just do 0, 1, and 2. And then you say, OK, if x is 0, what is y equal? And so, yeah, you just plug it in. Y is equal to 0 plus 4, so that's 4. So Y is 4. If X equals 1, I plug it in. Y equals 1 plus 4, which is 5, right? And if X is 2, Y equals 2 plus 4, that's 6. All right, with my T-chart, I now have three coordinate points, three ordered pairs. 0, this is 0, comma 4, this is 1, comma 5, and this is 2, comma 6, okay? And now I just have to plot these points. How many people have done all this before, just so I know? So it's, it's new for some, but not everybody, okay. All right, so if I were going to plot this point, let me just get rid of some of my, my dots and stuff. Okay. All right. If I were going to plot this, these points, 0, 4, what would, what would I do? What would I do? First point, 0, 4. Somebody. 4 up, right? I don't go anywhere to the left or right because it's 0, but I do go up 4. I put a dot. Next one, 1, 5. I go to 1 and I go up 5, put a dot. Next one, 2, 6. I go to 2, go up to 6, put a dot. Whoops, 6 is dot here. Now, now I draw a line. And ideally, hopefully, those three points, are you writing on the screen? Yeah. Uh, you have your T-chart? Yeah. Where? Right. Yeah. T-chart? This, all this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. So, um, and uh, so, so, uh, where was I again? Oh. So now this is th these three points better be in a straight line. If they're not, 
you know you, you did something wrong, right? And so you're going to draw a straight line now through those points, right? And you're going to put an arrow on the end of both, on both ends. Because that tells you all the possibilities of X and Y, right? And it's really useful in business and stuff when you're trying to figure out, you know, you know, cost versus revenue and things like that. Or, you know, if, if in the, in the net first five years, you, you, you know, you, your business was growing at this rate, how far, you know, how much income might you make in 10 years, right? You can sort of project or predict using a pictorial graph like this. It's really very useful. Um, but the line, it's important to realize the line goes on forever and ever, okay? Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, one other thing. How many points do you need in order to draw a straight line? Two. Well, wait. Well, why did I use three? Why did I use three? I have more numbers, but why is that helpful? Sachi. It checks your work. What if I did this? What if I did zero, four, if I only did two points, and I said zero, four, and one, eight? And I plotted one, eight. One, eight was up here. If I, if I didn't plot that first third one, two, six, right? Let me get rid of my line again for a second, right? If I just had this here, and I, uh, let's see, two, what did I just do? Two, six, two, six. Yeah, two, six, that was right. But I didn't have this one, I had that. If I plotted and I had this point, this point, and this point, I know it's not a straight line. I know I did something wrong, right? So by using three points, I'm, I'm working, I'm putting a check method in there. If all three of them are in a straight line, I probably did it right. If they're not in a straight line, one of them is wrong. And I have to go back and refigure it out and see. Zero, one, zero, where is, yeah. Zero plus four is four. One plus four is five. Oh, that's my problem. You see what I mean? And then I realize, oh, I got to change that to a five. And then I change that back to a five. And then I see I have a straight line. I draw it, and I'm done. Okay? So that's as far as I'm going to go today. Tomorrow, we're going to um, practice those things. The homework. Um, you have seven minutes, eight minutes actually, to work on the homework right now. Some of you could actually...